Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about our next storm system as it's the calm before the storm as things start to really ramp up going into next week. Good morning, everyone. This is your Monday update. Hope one have had a fabulous weekend out there and spent some time with your families. I really enjoyed the day off and finally got to see the sun. It's been a while since I saw that thing as it's been very cold uh, where I live in it was just great to get out and enjoy the outdoors but yeah this week things are really going to start to settle down after a very cold week last week for a good part of the country and a very active week so things are really going to be calming down in a big way but we do have some things to highlight this week with the water vapor imagery you can actually see man this steady stream of moisture out here in the pacific northwest that is the atmospheric river coming back with the vengeance this week and they're going to be dealing with a lot of flooding rains up there in the Pacific Northwest. It's just gonna be just a relentless flow of moisture gonna be streaming into that part of the country and that's gonna be a daily occurrence. So as we go throughout the week, there's, this, there's a, a risk right now that the Weather Service actually put out as just this long duration event. I mean, it's just gonna be a relentless supply of moisture coming off the Pacific and they're gonna be inundating the Pacific Northwest. There's even parts today that have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall as this is just gonna continue to add up some of these totals. And let's go over some of those totals after your work week. So between now and say Saturday morning, here's some of your rainfall totals that you can kind of expect up here in Vancouver around two inches, down here back to uh, Victoria around two and a half inches. You start heading into Seattle, we're talking about five inches, you know, over the duration of the, of the week down to Tacoma about six inches and there's sporadic amounts here upwards to eight inches. So you're talking an excessive rainfall and that's why they've got flash flood watches out for this region down into Longview about four inches and to Portland about four inches. You head into Spokane about two inches. So you can definitely see there's some pretty significant totals uh, throughout the week. And now let's head a little bit further south into Oregon where Salem's gonna get about almost four inches of rainfall this week. Uh, Rose Roseburg, two inches, Medford about an inch and a half. So yeah, you can definitely see where they're gonna be picking up some of the heavier rainfalls and having to deal with that just relentless amount of atmospheric surge that they're gonna be dealing with all week long. It's been fairly dry. So this is gonna be coming back in a vengeance with those with that of really heavier amounts today. And I think it's just daily sporadic lighter amounts as we get progressed through the week. But over time, that is gonna add up to some pretty significant totals as you get towards uh, throughout your work week. And then if we head further south, you can definitely see down into Eureka, about two inches of rainfall. It definitely tails off as we get down into San Francisco and down into San Jose. But yeah, definitely some much needed rainfall in parts of this neck of the woods, but too much <laughs> as you get into uh, portions of Washington and uh, Oregon here. So it's all gonna be about the jet stream. I mean, this week that we go back, this uh, the polar vortex retreats well back to the north. And as it does, I mean, that's just gonna be this big H for a good chunk of the country. That is that is a Pacific wind, that's, the, that's a zonal wind, and that is a very warm wind. <laughs> we got a lot of sinking air uh, for good chunk of the south and the southern plains and parts of the southeast where it's gonna be pretty dry and experiencing those well above average temperatures as the jet stream really starts to retreat well to the north, but it's gonna be still along into this region, into the Pacific Northwest and along the Great Lakes into parts of New England here. You can actually see this little dip by, we, by the time we get into that Wednesday, March 2nd timeframe. That has to deal with the Arctic Oscillation. You can actually see it going negative here around the third, and that's gonna be able to buckle the jet stream just enough where it's gonna send some of that, some of that polar, you know, colder air into our nor north regions up into the Great Lakes and parts of uh, uh, North uh, New England there that's gonna bring some clipper systems. So it's gonna be these daily occurrence of these clipper systems, but I think one's gonna be trailing the other and then another one as we get into that third time frame, that second and third time frame, we could be looking at some, you know, sh snow showers, Lake Enhanced to Duke snow showers into parts of Michigan up along the Great Lakes here, that'll eventually filter into parts of New England here and uh, no, uh, north parts of uh, New York into Syracuse where they've been de desperately needed some snow. They're really 
far behind for their snow totals this year going back into vermont and new hampshire heading into maine here as you look at the jet stream i mean this is just well to the north all these orange shaded areas that's your high and dry area as this really starts to buckle and retreat and it's just really into our northern sections and to the pacific northwest where they could be inundated with that atmospheric river and all the colder air and all the the, the most inclement air you know weather is going to be up here into canada while much of the much of the u.s is going to be experiencing some good you know fairly nice weather for this week uh, but we are going to be looking at those clipper systems so as these systems come through sporadically all throughout the week these are some snowfall totals you're going to be picking up between now and friday so about you know a trace to an inch or two and parts of uh, minnesota here into wisconsin going into michigan along the great lakes here going into new york we, we could be looking at some a little bit heavier totals you know three to four inches not a significant vent by any stretch of the imagination but definitely some snow you're going to be adding to those ski resorts out here up here into uh, vermont and new hampshire heading into uh, maine upwards to three possibly five inches in some of the you know isolated amounts and that is through friday but as we go to the north i mean this is the polar vortex so we dealt with all that colder air last week because of the fifth polar vortex uh, a kind of an elongation or the stretching out when it stretches out and it weakens it sends that colder air to the south and to the united states but now it's retreating back to the north right it's all bottled up it's a big circle and all that all that colder air is really confined to the arctic again but that doesn't actually take long and last long because as we get into this weekend going into that fifth and sixth time frame not only does it actually elongate again and stretch again but this time it actually splits and as it splits it's going to send some of those like say polar lobes down to the south through the mid latitudes and eventually that's going to filter some of that colder air into the united states again as we get into late this weekend especially as we go into early next week so you can definitely see by that fifth time frame we start to see a pretty significant trough setting up again as that polar vortex splits and that sends some of that colder air back into the united states again it's going to set up set the stage for much below average temperatures in a good chunk of the parts parts of the west heading into california and in nevada here into the in the four corners regions alaska stays warm with that ridge of high pressure but what we're going to be dealing with i mean all week long i mean the atmosphere is going to be resetting you're going back into the 50s 60s 70s you know if not 80s and in, in good chunk uh, parts of the country here and parts of the south and the southeast that is going to fuel the fire and once we have this trough setting up off the west out west and then tap it into some of that gulf moisture you got the southwest flow all week and then once we clash in that in that atmosphere that is going to set the stage for uh you know snow it's going to set the stage for flooding rains and severe weather unfortunately as we get into uh next week time frame because you can actually see these little spokes of energy by the time we get into saturday as these move across we've got one we've got two we've got three <laughs> and then we got four so it's going to be a relentless supply as we got much colder conditions filtering in off the west flashing into those much well above average uh, temperatures that sets the stage for that severe weather and to the north of that you're going to have snow breaking out because that's the cold side and then to the south of that you got the rain and a lot of the flooding rains and then some of this could turn severe as we get into late next weekend so let's let's take a look at the setup by the time we get into that saturday time frame so as these spokes of energy come across it's going to be dealing with that south wind so the southwest wind is a warm wind and then it's also going to be dealing with that colder air going to be pushing from the south so you're going to have that battle zone and in the middle you're going to have that overrunning conditions where we could be looking at some icy conditions starting to come into play into parts of michigan uh you know minnesota here and wisconsin going into uh, michigan and to the north we've got that snow heading back into montana heading into wyoming as it back into uh, uh, colorado on the north side of that low and to the south side that's the warm side that's the warm sector and you're going to be dealing with some 
some heavier rains if not some severe storms by the time we get into that sunday night time frame but that snow just extends to the north of there going to be impacting parts of the colorado going back into denver as we have that southwest wind just still prevalent and as that southwest wind is still prevalent it's going to be going to be increasing those overrunning conditions up here in parts of the northeast by then with some of those overrunning icy type setups heading into parts of new england as we get into next weekend uh sunday time frame but underneath that under the warm sector where we have that clash in temperatures we could be setting the stage from for some severe weather probably sometime around sunday night time frame that's what i'm eyeing right now and the parts of north texas going into oklahoma and to arkansas as as well as uh, missouri here as this system will be fishtailing across from west to east as we go through this weekend going into next week and as it does it's going to be a fairly slow mover so we got all this cold air intrusion right we've got the warm sector it's going to be building up all week long so you're going to be building up all that energy in the upper atmosphere and as that as that taps into that atmosphere it's going to be setting the stage for some flooding rains unfortunately i think it's going to be really taking place you know by the time we get into that monday uh march 7th time frame in parts of uh, eastern texas going into louisiana heading into the arklatex here into the tennessee valley so some of these could be pretty significant totals and we're probably going to be in, in, inundated with some flash flood watches by then if not some of these actually could be turning severe as these move from uh, parts of oklahoma heading into the arklatex going into that monday time frame but here's the setup as we get deeper into next week going into this weekend Man, look at all those blues at some much well below average temperatures filtering in off that trough that's going to be diving in off the west. So those are well below average temperatures coming back into California, into Nevada, here in uh, Arizona, as well as uh, Utah with well above average temperatures in the southeast and parts of the southern plains here. And this is going to be a slow mover. So as we get deeper into next weekend on the 8th to the 14th time frame, from that March the 7th, this is the second week of March, you can see the blue really start to expand. So that's gonna be a pretty cold week for a good chunk of the country as it's eventually just gonna be moving from west to east. So this is gonna be filtering a little bit further south. And then it's, this is just gonna expand as we go throughout the week. This is the following week as this clashes with those with that air mass so i'm expecting a really active week especially as we go into that second week of uh, march time frame and here's the setup we could be looking at some pretty heavy rains through the fifth through the seventh time frame but some moderate rains moderate you know excessive rainfall into parts of Ar Ar arkansas into missouri parts of southern illinois southern indiana going into kentucky here as well as the tennessee valley but even then we have these other systems those those spokes of energy i showed you uh as we get into that saturday time frame that's going to be tapping into that energy and then that's going to be pushing a more heavy rain extending through next weekend through that 11th time frame so this whole area is going to be inundated with multi-inch if not flooding rains if so, some of these could be some double digit total rainfalls as we extend going into the following weekend and here's the expanded view here's the rainfall setup for the next 10 days and like i mentioned the pacific northwest is just going to get pummeled with some very heavy rainfall over the next several days and these will add up into some pretty healthy totals so that's not going to go any way anytime soon then we've got that trough heading back into the, this weekend that's going to set the stage for, for, for more instability and some snow in this region but then we got to deal with that severe threat as we get into uh, the, that second week of March. And here's some of these totals. I mean, look at the graph here. We're talking double digits over a good chunk of the parts, you know, possibly the southeast, going into Tennessee, going into Kentucky. This seems to be the bullseye right here as you're going to be remaining in the warm sector for a good, a good while, building up that energy. And that western trough is just going to take its sweet time <laughs> moving across from west to east and as it slows that's going to be putting those training rains over the same areas for an extended period of time so i'm deeply concerned about flash flooding setting up as we get into that second week 
of March. And not only some of those could be severe on the severe side as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. I know tomorrow I'm probably going to fine tune the March outlook and kind of really expand the view so you can kind of really know what to expect. So I appreciate you guys watching. Definitely stay tuned tomorrow and catch that March update as well. So be sure to like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.